Spider mites, gotta love them. In this video, we're gonna get into what spider mites are, what they eat, reproductive cycle, the conditions they thrive in, and just about everything you're gonna need to know. You're here with Mark Batwell at perfectgardens.com. Let's go ahead and get into it. Start of week three. Yeah, looking good. Look at this monster. Wish they were all that size. Okay guys, so let's just be really clear. Spider mites can be red, orange, yellow, green, and brown. Right when I started to get familiar with these bugs, I would always see these different colors and I wasn't sure actually in the very beginning, this was well over 10 years ago, whether I was dealing with a different bug. And so I actually got more familiar with the conditions of how the plant looked and the early stages of it versus getting familiar with the actual bug and what it looks like. Because I actually had to get really good really quickly at identifying whether it was a bug problem or a mold problem with all my clients. In between the mushroom farm harvesting, we still had demand on product. And so I had to build up a large amount of growers that were willing to grow product to keep supplying the network in a sense. So what I would do is I would take one day a week to go and travel around Monterey County, visiting all these smaller growers anywhere from six lights all the way up to about 20 lights. And one of the things I had to do managing all these clients because I was actually physically going to their grow rooms on a weekly basis was I had to be able to walk through the room really quickly and see if there was any issues going on. Even this picture isn't really the best picture because it's still showing a later stage of spider mites. Although this is actually how I would identify if there was bug of the spider mites really quickly. I would see these little tiny white spots because for me, they're just so obvious, right? And what's going on here? Well, the spider mite is eating plant tissue and the plant sap, the chlorophyll off the plant. And they're actually biting into the each individual plant cells and sucking out all that content. And that's why you'll start to actually see all these little dots appear because these are actually the plant cells that they've sucked dry from the bottom of the leaves. And I guess my point to this whole story is that because spider mites can reproduce sexually and asexually, and what that means is they can have a partner or they can actually reproduce by themselves. So why is this so significant? Well, this is significant because one single egg can can create an infestation before your crop has been harvested. Why is that? It's because the cycle of these little critters, which are arachnids, actually, they're in the arachnid family for spiders, is that they will be an egg for two to four days, roughly, and then they will stay alive for 21 days. But in that time period of them being alive for 21 days, they can produce hundreds of eggs. And so often, because you're only dealing with one spider mite in the beginning, Beginning, and they're just making these little microscopic holes very often, you're not going to notice it because a lot of stuff in your grow room is new, right? You're dealing with new lights, you're dealing maybe with the greenhouse and the fans and hot weather, and you have to water and and your girlfriend or your wife it needs something from you. So very early on, it's easy for things to begin to get away from you. One of the things to remember, though, is the cycle of these plants that we're growing, right? Very often, we're going to be vegging these plants for maybe a month, maybe a month and a half, depending upon how big you're getting them. Some guys that are growing the big monster plants, they could be vegging them for up to three months. Then when you switch over into flowering, you're going to be flowering anywhere from seven weeks all the way up to 12 weeks, obviously depending upon what strains you're growing. On the bare minimum though, from a single egg, if you were even only vegging for about two weeks, if this problem was unmanaged, you could have tens of thousands of spider mites on your plant, creating an infestation where your entire grow room could become contaminated and you have to in a sense restart your entire operation. So what can you do about the problem, right? Well, first thing, obviously, if you're doing an indoor situation, you could create a better environment so that these bugs do not like being in your room or it's slowing down that reproductive cycle. They like dry, warm environments. So if you don't have an AC, you might want to get an AC. That's going to slow down the reproductive cycle. 
if you're growing in a greenhouse, maybe open up the greenhouse to an outside environment. A lot of times it's actually much easier to manage this problem at dealing with the greenhouse or outdoors than indoors. So I'm just going to focus in on the indoor side, although all of these things I'm talking about can be used for outdoor or greenhouse. Just be creative in your mind as I'm talking about them. So going back to the point though, is by creating a healthier growing environment, you're going to be able to help keep control of the problem and you'll be less likely to resort to pesticides and fungicides. Some of the options obviously you can use for pesticides, fungicides are like insecticide soap, neem oil, Azimax, pyrethium. I actually just released a video talking about blue magic. It's uh, from terpenes that help repel the plant. I actually like that product or other products that are like clove oil or rosemary, which helps dry out the products. Again, each of these pesticides and fungicides have their own pros and cons. And in other videos, I'll talk about them individually. Although for now, just know that there are sprays that can help solve the problem. The issue with that is that when you start to use a pesticide, you start to cut into your return on investment. And if you're not growing commercially or for the end consumer and you're growing for yourself, well, then you being a little more conscious of what you're putting onto the plant, because that's going to go into you at some point, should hopefully at least matter to you. I'm actually going to talk about using pesticides a little bit more in a second, although I'm just going to quickly mention also predatory mites, right? Where these are a few options out there that you can introduce into your room. And why would you want to introduce these things? Well, if you are growing biodynamically, this is just how you do it, right? Each of these bugs die and then they recycle back into your humic layer, which creates a better bioavailability overall in your soil. Most often than not, you're going to see this one right here, which is the Persilis, I think I'm saying that properly, and the Facilis right here. Most likely, you're going to see these two sold in the hydroponic industry. Why is because this one specifically eats spider mites and then ha dies because it has its own life cycle. The issue with these bugs, though, is that if they're sitting in your hydroponic store in that refrigerator throughout the day, depending upon how quickly they're sold, they're probably already dead and not going to be alive. Same issue with these two. Although, like I said, you're going biodynamically, this is definitely going to be something you're going to want to learn how to incorporate into your overall grow environment, not because because you're trying to deal with the spider mite problem just because you want critters like this in your grow room. Let's go back, right? The first thing is don't get spider mites. Don't even bring them into your grow room. I don't care what the situation is. If you are aware and you have the ability to be a little bit more picky, bring in good healthy genetics into your grow room and don't even start with the problem. Why? We go back to that life cycle, right? Even in just two, three months where no matter what, your flowering cycle is two months, a little bit of edge time, you might be going through four complete generational cycles. Each generation, each spider mite capable of producing hundreds of spider mites. So infestation right there. I know in some situations in some places in the world, it still is difficult to get good plants and good genetics. Sometimes you just have to take whatever someone's willing to give you. And normally they're not going to give you the good stuff. They're going to give you the crappy stuff. In those situations, I would be more open to using a pesticide, although I would only use it when it's in the clone stage. And I'm not talking about a teen. I'm talking about where it's rooted, you still have it in the, the plug form, and you're able to go in and spray the bottom of the leaves, the top, the entire plant, drench it. You're able to rub your thumb on the bottom of those leaves, trying to kill any alive spider mites and kill the eggs. And then once again, you're going to have to repeat the pesticide issue. In it. And again, right, I'm talking about this very disciplined process where I'm taking the clone, I'm dunking it, I'm rubbing the bottom of the leaves, I'm putting it back in its environment, and then I'm repeating that cycle probably two more times, right? And then even after I transplant, I'm still going to make sure to double check this plant because I was known, it was known to have spider mites. That's a lot of work. If you're not willing to do that entire process, 
just don't bring it into your room. This also means do not clone from plants that you know have spider mites because all you're going to do is keep perpetuating the problem. I know this might sound so stupid, but I'm telling you, I have witnessed this for over a decade. Everyone does it. They don't want to kill a plant and they keep trying to save it over and over and over. And before you know it, they never really ever get a good crop off. Just don't bring these pugs into your room. They are very small. Yes, you kill the adults, but then the eggs are still there. And if you don't do a good job of spraying the underbrush and being very thorough and you have a large grow room, the bugs only become more resistive to the pesticides that you use. And like I said already, if you're using these pesticides, you're cutting into your overall return on investment. I'll give you guys a couple quick scenarios about this situation. If I walked into a grow room and I had complete control control over the grow room and I saw an infestation dependent upon the size of the grow room and dependent upon how close I was to harvest, let's say within two weeks, yeah, I'd go ahead and let the plants finish out. Then I would remove everything in that grow room, clean it completely out. Remember that these bugs have a 21 day cycle. And again, do I have an infestation, right? I would probably then allow that grow room to rest for at least 21 days. In the meantime, I'd probably would get one clone, put it in its own area, start vegging it, get it to a point where it's ready to start taking clones while I'm letting the other area of the grow room go through a complete grow cycle. Let's say I go to a grow room and it just goes into flowering and there's an infestation. I would actually clear out that section. And again, I'm talking about larger grow rooms, smaller grow rooms. You kind of have an infestation, your whole grow room. This is one lighter, two lighters. You, you kind of just have to restart. We're talking about larger grow rooms. I would would actually clear out a section so there's always one plant that's that's going to be worse because that's where everything kind of started that's the mecca the ground zero i would clear out four by four five by five six by six maybe even two lights so it might be even be a four by eight or even a four by 12 foot section clear it take all the plants out just get rid of them i know it would be so it's so hard to do it and again we're talking about right going into flowering maybe even still in veg you might be flipping right into flowering and you see that there's an infestation, right? It's not just that one mecha plant, but it's all already spreading to all of the plants around that one. And, and very often, most growers are crowding their room anyways. So removing this section is only going to give a chance for the rest of that grow room to flourish because after you remove that area, what you'll end up doing is taking the remainder of your plants and putting it underneath those lights that it, the section where you had cleared out. What is that going to do? Well, it's going to slow down the infestation because there it's, the plants are spread out, so it's harder for them to travel. And you probably have removed 90%, 95% of that infestation in your grow room. So in a sense, you've restarted this cycle. So if you're going to right into flowering again, well, at this point now, they're only going to be able to have a complete reproductive cycle of about two cycles max. I would also reduce the intensity of the lights because you know that they like hotter, warmer, drier environments. So if you reduce the intensity of the light and grab a pesticide that you might like, you'll be able to give the remainder of your crop one good spray which is again going to cut back on the remainder of any of the bugs still in your grow room. Because at the end of the day, what am I trying to do here with you guys? I'm trying to encourage you guys and get you guys to your crop or get you to your harvest while keeping a higher quality in your grow room without using too much pesticides or contaminating your crop, which is going to lower your quality overall. And I'm trying to reduce your overall stress by getting rid of that problem. If you reduce that stress, you're going to be able to put more time and attention to the remainder of the plants and your the rest of your life isn't going to fall apart because you're just stressing out over these plants that you go into your room and the problem just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Remember guys, 99% of the time I have seen infestations get started because they allow one plant, one clone to come into the grow room and they don't do the due diligence of making sure the plant is healthy in the first place. So just slow down the process. Don't just rush your genetics in there. And more often, you're not going to run into problems. I hope this video was helpful. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone.